This is a lost city in the Louisiana forest, 14 miles north of Alexandria. It waits for someone to pass through and ask, what is this amazing, huge, deserted place? The ruins of barracks and mess halls peek through the piney woods between Tioga and Ball. More so for its current condition, the ruins of Camp Livingston are quite the sight. Before World War II, on 48,000 acres, the War Department set aside this rifle and artillery range. America might soon be drawn into the war in Europe and the Pacific, and America simply wasn't ready. So in March of 41, the government took possession of 708 buildings here among a sea of 6,765 tents. Connected by 22 miles of these concrete streets, there were nine 400-foot water wells and 340 fire hydrants. The hospital had 1,320 beds, 63,470 soldiers trained here, and by the end of the war, 1,350 German prisoners were guarded here. Now look at it. We shudder to say it's forgotten. More than any abandoned landmark in Louisiana, these deserted training camps bring out a faded memory of the Second World War. But that's why you're here, you and I, in this search for lost Louisiana. At a time when a perspective on war is in order, this is our home front. And we begin with a range that's still operating just south of here, Camp Beauregard. Reese. Today, the National Guard disciplines young people to straighten out their future at Camp Beauregard in Pineville. These teens signed up for a kind of boot camp. Sixty years ago, a real close order drill was practiced on this same earth. The camp's Louisiana Maneuvers Museum honors a long local history of such discipline. Lieutenant Richard Moran is curator. At first, it was very hard, uh, very, very uh, spartan conditions. You're talking about, at best, a squad-level tent, eight men sleeping in a tent. And uh, it was quite the improvement when you finally got a wooden floor to that compared to, uh, you know, some of the living I'm sure they had done as a civilian. The, the citizen soldiers, the National Guard, they were probably a little more used to that type of training because, they, you know, they had to do it on a more regular basis. But the Army had, uh, or the country had instituted its first peacetime draft. My brother Bill is in the army now. We heard from him today. His waistline getting back to normal now. Here's what he had to say. Germany's invasion of Poland in 1939 had American strategists worried. If we had to join the fight in Europe, how could we battle the Nazis' brutal and all-out assaults? We had to think fast and work out maneuvers to beat Hitler's blitzkrieg, lightning warfare. Congress had just authorized expanding America's army to 210,000. The president wanted another 17,000. Everyone knew a huge number of our boys were untested, so the War Department authorized massive practice maneuvers. Louisiana would host these tests. And in fact, the day that the 1940 maneuvers ended here in Louisiana, France had fallen. So uh, it became very much a, uh, uh, a very, you know... Expedited. Right, correct. Got people's to... fever up at that point. That's right. So uh, by 1941, the Army had, had risen to such a strength, they said, okay, now it's time for an Army versus Army exercise. So they once again looked around and they said, Louisiana has the best, you know, best location for it. So uh, 472,000 men descended upon Louisiana and were within a 50-mile radius of Camp Beauregard. Camp Beauregard was the headquarters uh, for the maneuvers, and uh, they commenced training. By August 1940, Camp Beauregard headquartered more than 2 million acres of complicated troop shuffles, mock battles, supply line tests, a shakedown that reached across the Sabine River into Texas. Some of the commanders are household names today. General Eisenhower, or well, at that point he was just a lieutenant colonel. You had uh, Colonel Patton, later one-star general Patton. When the men were furloughed from this dress rehearsal for war, they took in the sight.
look at it. It's got to be circa 1940, an abandoned bridge from World War II here near Tioga, in Camp Livingston, this enormous place that's abandoned, but we hope not forgotten. It's an immense reminder of the immense contribution that Louisiana made to the efforts of World War II. 